there's so much trouble. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Hey, good. Sorry, guys, that we're late and also probably not in the right spot. We had more technical difficulties that were out of our control this morning. So <laughs> here we are. We'll wait for you guys to show up probably soon, hopefully. Mary may be able to redirect Ooh. our link. <laughs> It's, it's it's a Friday morning, and I don't know about you, but, like, this week, it finally feels like I can't wake up in the mornings. Like, you know, when my alarm goes off, it's dark outside, and I am just, like, I am not here for it. Like, it is. Yes. It is. Yeah. I'm having a hard time getting going. So maybe the live is having the same. It sounds like that's probably the case. And, yeah, with it being colder in the morning, too, colder and darker, yeah. I'm one of those people who loves loves, loves, loves the time change because I hate it being dark in the morning and it's still, the days are still shorter. It's still darker later, but I would much rather have it be dark when I get out of work than have it be dark when I wake up in the morning, like hands down. And so I, I am always eager for that. So it can be a little bit lighter again. Yeah. I, I like, um, I like when we get that extra hour of sleep, you know, that is nice. And then waking up and having some, some sunlight because yeah, these mornings right now are not. I'm like, it's it's yeah. a little bit cold, and my dog is super snuggly when the when it's cold. Hi, Liz. Yes. Hey, Liz. So Liz found us. So Good. He, she always does. <laughs> so he snuggles when it's cold, and I'm just like, I don't want to get out of bed. Yeah, no, that's rough. And like, yeah. Do you have your furnace going yet? Um, some days. You yeah, know, me I, too. I finally turned it on. Um, yeah. But it doesn't, there are some days when it doesn't kick on. And like yesterday yeah. I came home from work and I was like, oh my God, throwing windows open because it had gotten warm during the day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going back and forth with the heat. Yeah, me too. I turned it like on pretty low just so that like it wouldn't get crazy cold overnight, you know? So um, it's been okay, comfortable wise, but yeah, I'm just like, it's just so hard to wake up when it's dark out and your house is chilly and you just want to stay warm until the sun comes out. <laughs> well, Liz, considering you've already had snow out there in Colorado, I hope you are, you've already turned your heat on. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Um, speaking of weather, I was just, I was, I was looking at Libby last night. Mm -hmm. That's our, as everybody knows, I'm sure, but just in case, that's our ebook, e-audio one of them apps. And um, if you don't spend a lot of time on there, you may not know, but one really cool thing that they do is they have like a lot of like curated collections and like themed collections that basically like you'd have a display at the library, but on Libby and there's a ton of, um, I, I, it just, it's kind of fun to scroll through and see like what their ideas and stuff are. And they have one right now that's called uh, two times of year, autumn and waiting for autumn. And I'm assuming that they're books that like feel autumnal in some way. There was also one called Pumpkin Spice. Yes. There was also one called Pumpkin Spice Latte Cozy Mysteries. There's a section that says devour books, not brains. Um, <laughs> a section called You've Watched Tiger King, Now What? Um, and so I was just appreciating those as I was trying to find something to listen to yesterday. And even if you don't end up using the audiobook or the ebook, it's still kind of fun to get ideas that way. You can place a hold on a print book through the catalog or whatever. And um, I just, I, I enjoyed reading those yesterday. Um, a, a lot of, um, Columbus puts together most of those. There are a couple of people on, in, the, in staff at the Columbus Public Library that create those lists. A couple other libraries to help out with yeah. Columbus. And I will admit, like, they make me laugh sometimes. Or, and I have maybe once or twice stolen that idea to play <laughs> in the library. Not stealing. We've talked about this before. Librarians like to right. share. They yes. basically shared the idea with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Liz has got the frost in the mornings and 80s in the afternoon. So she gets that it. Is, that's really hard to plan for, especially if you're going to do something outside. Because in the morning, you got to be, like, head to toe. And then in the afternoon, you're like, I wish I was wearing shorts. <laughs> and like the other day, I wore my coat to work and I was like, oh, I don't need it when I left at lunch. I'm like, surely it's warm enough. And it was not warm enough yeah. to not have my coat. And then like after work, it was like, it's crazy the way the temper temperature fluctuates. Yeah. This time of year, it's definitely hard to plan for, hard to predict, but I do love it. I do love it so much. Fall is my favorite. I, I love fall. 
And it's so pretty outside. Fuzzy sweaters. And yeah, it just, it's, it's the best. I love yeah. watching the trees change color. Yeah. I think we're like, we're, ge we're getting into like just the peak of that, you know, there for a while it was like some trees and then this, a lot of them were still green, but now we're, yeah. And then like when the rains start, like, I don't know, like there's something about that too, that I just, I don't know. It feels romantic in some way like re why rain and fall feels romantic mm -hmm. i don't know but it does it just i don't yeah. know about fall rains that and just so cozy and like we said there's really only a problem waking up in the morning and feeling cold outside and warm in bed and all that is only a problem when you have to get up and be somewhere if you don't it's just really delightful so that's another really nice part about fall staying in bed feels really cozy and and really nice and you know being on the couch under a blanket or whatever is really nice it's only a problem if someone makes you leave like to go to work <laughs> bosses no <laughs> no we love our boss she's great of course i love going to work it's just maybe at that moment when i'm in bed I might prefer to stay in bed. <laughs> and Audrey is glad that the summer humidity has, oh my God, me too. Yeah. I do not like humid. No, don't get me started because that'll be the whole rest of the show. We'll be Allison talking about summer weather and getting angry about it. So Mary says she once uh, met a librarian who described herself as a copy leftist. <laughs> Librarians definitely love to share. They do. And it's, no one needs to do the same work more than once. Right. That's like the whole premise of my job. One person catalogs it and then we all just glom on. <laughs> we make it, we try to improve it and make it better, but one person does that initial work. But mistakes get made that way. I uh, remember one of my, my, the first library that I ever worked at, I uh, processed all the new books. Like I put the jackets on them and the stickers and all of that and stamped. And um, I, was I had this one book and I'm like, that number doesn't seem right. Um, and I love that cup, by the way. That we have Tara you know, for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was an American history book, but it was at 937. I was just like, that's not right. Because it's like ancient civilizations or something. And um and so I took it to the cataloger. She was like, yep, I just copied what everyone else did. And it, we, were, we were in a consortium with like 200 and some libraries, like 80% of them had it at the wrong number because. They yeah, just, well, the original record, there's a good chance the original record was a Library of Congress record and very bare bones. Like we added, build a lot of stuff, but that Library of Congress record will have a field in it for a call number. And there's a good chance that that initial Library of Congress librarian transposed those numbers. And now here we are. And I actually, we've talked about this before because things have been misshelved this way, but I almost transposed numbers the other day and put um, put a plague book in the cookbooks. And I know that's happened before as far as shelving goes because it's, yes. it's 614 versus 641. And so you just transpose those numbers, but I did catch this and I was like, mm, that's not gonna, that won't go over well. I, I, I found a plague book in the cookbook sections not long ago. And I'm just like, <laughs> it yeah. looks very different. <laughs> I mean, like it just it does not go. But. Yeah. Yeah, thankfully I did catch that, but certainly transposition happens to all of us, but it was great that you caught that and hopefully yeah, given context, hopefully it's different enough. The other one that I would transpose, I transposed several times and I know Samantha told me not to call her out when she's not here to defend herself. Samantha told me that she also transposed this number several times was the number for the Obama presidency and then the number for Minecraft which really only matters in the J section because there aren't a ton of adult Minecraft books, but you'd have like Obama, like a Bi Obama book in with like the Minecraft books. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Yummy viruses. That's how zombies happen. <laughs> but, nice, Audrey. Well, I've never considered that, that tracing the a zombie outbreak back to a misshelved book, but we really should be careful. <laughs> Um, Any interesting yeah. books come across your desk recently? Yes, actually. And you know the one I'm going to talk about next because we this just happened to come up yesterday. Um, I So you told me yesterday that you read Tana French. Is this correct? Yes. I've never read her. 
And I was getting deep into a New Yorker interview with her in my little odd moments throughout the day because um, she writes a mystery series. What's it called? Um, Dublin Murder Squad. The Dublin Murder Squad mystery series. She self-describes it as A murders B and C figures it out. It's a, it's a murder mystery. Um, but she has this book and then one before it called The Witch Elm. And this one is called The Searcher. And they're not part of that series. And they're listed as like novels, a novel, not a mystery. Um, and I was looking at it because I don't, a fair amount of my job is wanting to make sure that people can find stuff and right. also not actively misleading them. You don't want to put something in mystery that is just not, it's just not at all because then a mystery reader is going to be disappointed, but you also don't want to have a Tana French fan continuing to look in mystery. She has nothing new. She has nothing new because they're in a different place. Yeah. So I try to, my, my, there are several go-to resources for this, but one of the things that I also do is I try to look and see what did the author say? How is the author describing this new work? Is the author saying, I wanted to make a departure from my romance books and write something different Then I'm like, well, the author considers this something different. That's something to keep in mind. So that's kind of what I was doing with this. And go ahead. I think, however, that the character in that book is a member of the Dublin murder squad. I think she's... It's about Cal Hooper. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... It's a man. Is there another character? Not in the description, but I'm sure. There are, there's more than one, but it is about a man. Is there another character? Yeah, it's all just one character. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. I, I think there's another mm -hmm. character that turns up in that book. Quite possibly. In the Dublin Murder Squad. Yeah. I I certainly know. I'll have to investigate. Yeah. So but I read I'm really looking forward to that book, but yeah. one of the reasons why I did not put myself on hold for it right away is because I wanted to read... I haven't read all of hers. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that that character is introduced in another book. She does that a lot. She'll like have yeah. um, character, like with the Dublin Murder Squad books, mm -hmm. like um, the first book, there are these, these two detectives, they're working together. And like the one detective is like the focus of the story. Um, and then like the next book, it's the second detective, but she's working with a different detective now mm -hmm. on a different assignment. And she's the focus of that story. Mm -hmm. And then the third book, the the, the detective that yeah. she's working with is now yeah. the story. So yeah. I think that one of the characters in another book probably she, she probably likes so. to, she likes to give you a lot of backstory on your character, yes. which you really like. Um, yes. It really kind of shapes their motivation. And yes, her her first two books um, were turned into like a series, like mini series type. I think. Mm -hmm. It might have been Showtime or Star It doesn't say in here. I looked. They don't mention it. Um, but it's called In the Woods. And it was, but it was her first two books, In the Woods and, or Into the Woods. I, I, I forget because two books came out right at the same time. One of them it's was In the Woods. Okay. Hers was In the Woods. The other one was Into the Woods. And it was terrible that, that six months yeah. trying to figure out which book people wanted. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, I can imagine. But it was that one and the likeness. They mm -hmm. took those two stories and combined them and made it into like one show. So it was yeah. like pretty interesting. That's cool. Well, reading the interview with her made me want, kind of made me want to read her, her books. And when you were talking about the characterization, she spent maybe like the first 35 years or whatever of her life as an actress. Mm -hmm. And so she's super into characterization and much less interested in plot. <laughs> and so she said that she... Um, when she's writing one of her mysteries, she gives, like, she has her husband help her because while well, he's also an actor, he's also a director. And so plot, a plot is much more critical to him than it is to her. And so he helps her like find holes and things like that, which I thought was interesting. Um, but ultimately she described this book as, oh, Mary says Dublin Murders is on stars. Stars. Yeah. Um, and, but she describes this book. She said that if you are looking for a book like her Dublin Murder Squad, you're going to get 150 pages into this and be like, well, where the heck's my mystery? So <laughs> I'm putting it in fiction um, because The Witch Elm is also in fiction, the previous one to this. And so um, that was the choice that I made. But this 
is something that I agonize over at work. And then like two years down the road, something else will happen. I'll be like, oh no, I should have put them in mystery all along. But you know, it just, like I said, I feel better though when I look at something that the author has said, because I don't know. So anyway, that's where you can find her. She does have holds. Um, there, there are holds on this book, so you won't, won't find it on our shelves for a while, but um, you can place the hold. I will probably... I probably won't bother with the Dublin Murder Squad, but I might check out Witch Elm because maybe that'll have fewer holds on it um, than The Searcher. And it's, I don't know that they're connected. She also said that like this book doesn't have a detective in it. There is a detective, but no one's solving the crime. You're not viewing the crime being solved by somebody the way that you traditionally do in a mystery as well. So yeah. anyway. And I think um, my brain just went started the sentence and it was gone oh i'm sorry that's okay well we'll come back to it you can if you think of it no nope. oh. moving on <laughs> moving on did you have did you have anything i mean i've got plenty of stuff oh I, i've got lots of stuff i do you read lisa jewel i really like her books this one isn't her newest um it, although i think it's fairly new yeah it came out last year a family upstairs mm -hmm. this one is like there's this house and these two families and like murder and lots of stuff. But um, she's got a new book coming out, Invisible Girl, mm -hmm. uh, where this girl goes missing. And um, like people think that like this one creepy guy who like keeps himself might be the person. And yeah. It's just like, it's one of those, um, I really like her books and I really think she does not get the attention she deserves. She's a British author and um yeah, I just, I really yeah. like her books and I'm surprised it like, you know, she's, she's not, I guess she says it's best selling author, but she's not one that people like ask about. There's never like a no. really big holds list on her, at, at, yeah. at her order, but I'm always like, she's got another book out. I am ordering it. It is really yeah. good. She's one of those authors that I would really recommend to people who've never given her a try. Mm -hmm. And if you like those, it's always like, multiple characters and multiple perspectives and all tying together so um, i see her a lot on um i follow a lot of like book instagram accounts hashtag bookstagram and i see her a lot on instagram like a lot of people okay. reading her books so it does seem like maybe more like one of those word of mouth type of authors that people and then like once you because she writes a lot once you've read one you're always reading the next place of jewel uh, Melanie said she's never read any, but maybe it's time. I like really it. recommend. Like I said, it's one of those things. I, whenever I see she's got a new book out, I make sure we have it on the list to order because I love her books. But she's not one of those ones that we get like a hold list for at at the library, and I'm always surprised by that. Mm -hmm. I mean, her books are so good. They so. do have holds for other libraries, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes, <laughs> I know they all, they always do go out on hold, but um. Yeah. Do you read Ruth Ware? I don't, um, but I know that she's really popular. Yeah, I wasn't sure if, if the Elisa Jewell was in some way similar to Ruth Ware because she has a new book that's out. I think, I don't know, her, I think Ruth Ware's books tend to, they are like thrillers and whatever, and they, they are actually straightforward, but from the little that I've read, I feel like they always have like almost like an eerie element to them like they're not actually supernatural at all but like they give you that vibe and until the mystery is figured out at least in the like i said very brief don't hold me to that all of her books but yeah this is just you know there's some kind of like there, there's like a psychological twist to them like I, I feel like there's something has happened and like but you spend the whole t story trying to figure out like like i'm listening to one of hers right now um I forget. Yes, she does have some that are like sort of women's fiction, like um, the 33. I think she started out kind of lighter and then got darker. Um, One Hit Wonder, I think, was kind of like, and 30 Nothing, I think, were more um, kind of about. Uh, women fiction more than than but yes i really like her i like everything she does so nice well i'll take it in a totally 
different direction. Um, this book is not new, unfortunately, but it did win an audiobook award this year. And I'm bringing it up because Leah, you will, we will have something to talk about with it too. Um, but it's Hey Kiddo, the graphic novel um, by Jarrett Krasowska. Um That's a hard name. It is. And he even pointed out that, what was it? He was given an award or something like that and his name was misspelled on that. Or it was the headline in his town paper or something. Leah and I saw this author speak. Um, at, yeah. Oh, Leah, you disappeared for me. Someone will have to tell us which one of us is actually gone. Um, oh, dear. There we go. Um, Leah and I saw him speak at the Ohio Library Council conference that we went to, and um, he had just an amazing presentation. I've looked for it several times, and he has a couple, he's like a TED Talk and a couple other things, but not the one that we saw, which definitely made everyone cry. Um, it was so good. I hate, it sounds very boring, but his PowerPoint was so good. It was like, he's a graphic artist, so he had a really wonderful PowerPoint presentation. Um, and so it was just, it was a really, really good presentation. Anyway, this book is about his life um, growing up. Hey, kiddo. Um, he had a mother who was absent due to a drug addiction and, and he was raised by his grandparents. And I believe that that is what most of this book is about, but it did win an audiobook award this year. And that's in part because Leo, you may remember, he has a, like a full cast recording, including anyone who is still alive and was willing to be part of the book. He had those people read their parts, um, which was just really special. He's the author of the Lunch Lady books, which is a popular J series. And he talked about how like when he was a kid, the the how like, you know, the lunch ladies were nice to him because, you know, he had such a rough childhood that, you know, and he like went back to his school and like the lunch lady that was still his lunch lady was still working there and like she remembered him. She, she thought he was his uncle, but like she knew his last name. Great family. <laughs> yeah, great family. But like it was it was really just sweet and a touching and I I haven't listened to that book because I think it's going to make me cry a lot. Yeah. Um, but it did win the award and I was very excited when I saw that because yeah. you know, it was just such a good and he, and he seems like a, I mean, I know it was one talk. It was a handful of books, but he does seem like a, like a really good guy and a really good person. He is speaking of the lunch lady that he kind of, I mean, loosely based. He placed the concept of the lunch lady books on his kind lunch lady, but um, she's a lunch lady who fights crime in the lunch lady books that he wrote. <laughs> um, he, you know, reconnected with her. He went back to this hometown like you described. And then when she passed away, he went back and attended her funeral. And at her funeral, they had like an image of the his cartoon lunch lady there because she served as the inspiration. And it was just all very, he had nothing but kind words to say about schools and librarians too, which Certainly, we eat we eat that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. If 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 you know someone happens to run across this, I think it's probably a very good story, even though I haven't read it. <laughs> very good. What else? Yeah. Um. Sizing people mm. up. Uh, a veteran FBI agent's user manual for print. For behavior prediction Ooh. by Robin Deak. Like, this is one of those things that I find fascinating. Like, like I'm a big fan of like the Criminal Minds TV series, like where people like, you know, based on their behavior, they can like di diagnose their psychological traits. And I'm just like, that's fascinating. And like to be able to, to look at someone and break them down and be like, your shoes, but your socks. And just like the way they do that in these books, like on that. It's fascinating to me, so I'm just like, ooh, maybe I could do that in real life. I could figure You're out. You're going to size us all up. Right? Like, that would, <laughs> would be fun, being able to, like, look at people and be like, I know what you're really about. Right? <laughs> I mean, do you want to know, though? Like, what if you learn something that you wish you could unlearn about somebody? Hmm. You can always cut people out. No. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up this book at random from the stack on my desk over yeah. here. And on the back, it, there is a note. Mm -hmm. This note says books. <laughs> Can I tell you, I leave myself notes like this all the time. Cute little um, hedgehog 
That's adorable. Right? It is. Books. This is the most useless note for a librarian to leave for herself. Like, I need to put a little more, few more words to that note. Like, no, 80% of what I do involves books. Right. Like, what, what does this note mean? Right. Especially considering that, I, I imagine that the note has shifted around, but considering the fact you found it on a stack of books, it's kind of like, yep, these are books. <laughs> <laughs> but do you find yourself doing this? My note, my note system is one, I can't read my own handwriting. And two, it's just all over the place. We talked about this a little bit when we were like going to pull books for the show. We're like, well, why don't we ever just keep track of the books we've pulled before and didn't talk about because we know we wanted to talk about them. Why do I just lose that note every week? I don't think I don't ever even remember intentionally throwing them away because I think in my mind I would be like, oh, I'll keep this. I just like lose it every week. It just flutter. It dissolves. It evaporates. I find I cannot tell you how many notes I find um, in my pants pockets or like <laughs> the remains of them in the washer. They've been through the laundry. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is not a helpful note for a librarian. But no, that is not helpful. <laughs> Um, I don't have much to say about this next book, but I just wanted to bring it um, in case anyone was interested. You may not have realized you could get this at the library. Knife throwing, like the pros. <laughs> throwing techniques, knives and axes, rules, mental preparation, and more. So um, anyone interested, there's lots of photos that accompany it. And uh, I am fascinated by knife throwing. Well, anyone watching, if you want to check out that book, please... Please place a hold on it, knife throwing like the pros, and um, let us know how that go how that goes for you. <laughs> I, no, like seriously though, I am fascinated by like knife throwing and like the like the 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 carnival thing where like the person stands there and lets someone throw knives at them. Like how do you how do you do that? How do you let someone? There's a lot of trust, a lot of trust in their ability. I guess, but yeah, I I, I occasionally will mm -hmm. like go online and like search for throwing knives and I'm like, I should get these. Oh, the throwing knives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things that fascinates me, which is why I ordered that book. <laughs> it'll it'll circulate. It certainly will. Um, there's that place down in Logan mm -hmm. where you can do axe throwing. Yeah, like, it's well, definitely trendy. Axe throwing, yeah. people do that as like their bachelor and bachelorette parties. I see it on TV. It's certainly popular. I was just, yeah. I just, the whole idea of axe throwing at a bar, to me, just seems like maybe not the best idea, though. Quite possibly not. Yes. Although, <laughs> I suppose, you know. I recommend been... reading that book and soberly. Yes. Audrey said she read the cover as mental penetration and didn't understand, but men men mental preparation makes more sense. I will say that probably in those like 130 numbers, we have also books about mental penetration because you put your mind out into the whatever sphere and then, or accept, I don't know. I feel like that that's probably been projection. We've got some books. Astral Astral yes. yes. I feel like we've probably, it's probably been written about Audrey. <laughs> But our copies have probably also been so that's possible too. <laughs> um, did you have another book? Um, I have yeah. one more that I can talk about briefly when you're. Um, this one is called Forty Two Ostrich One Hundred and Forty Two Ostriches. Um, it looks really good. It kind of when you were talking about the Jarrett book, Jarrett's mm -hmm. book it reminded me a little bit of that. There's a a 13 year old girl, she's got an unreliable mother. So like her grandma comes and takes her to the family ostrich farm. And like, I think then years later, she's got to save the ostrich farm. So it's about that, but that whole, um, I think there's a, like a family feud about like who gets what and everything. But um, it's just, you just never think of ostriches, but it's like, you know, that family story and forgiveness and, struggle mm -hmm. and I just I love the cover I just thought it was so yeah the cover is very fun so yes yes very nice I have one more that I brought especially for you um I'm sure it won't actually lead you to cooking but just in case the <laughs> Outlander Kitchen cookbook 
If anyone is a fan, this is another thing you can check out. It has thankfully pictures, nothing more disappointing than a cookbook without pictures. I hate a cookbook without pictures. Um, but so yeah, I guess it's Outlander inspired yes. recipes. I believe the new series is new season is coming out in DVD soon. Does that sound correct? Probably. Probably. Okay, because I know I, I know I ordered, I know I ordered a season of Outlander and it has a lot of holds. So I'm guessing that that's what it's the newest one. It's just it's, it was bubbling in the back of my mind. It was a while ago, but um, so I do think that the new season is coming out on DVD. So if that's something you don't have access to, you can place a hold for that. But there's nothing more fun than uh, binging something and then making a themed food to go along with it. So my sister and I keep talking about having an Outlander themed party and like stones and tartans and yes. So yes, that would be an excellent book to check out so we can prepare some dishes. Yeah, and you, I know that you and your sister can throw a themed party like no one. It's, it's, it's all my sister. Um, I'm just there. I'm just along for the ride. You just wear the costume. Right? Yeah, she's the creative <laughs> force behind that. <laughs> well, if you do that, you should definitely provide us with some pictures of it or anybody else. <laughs> okay. If, if we ever get around to it, we've been talking about it for like six years now, so... <sighs> Maybe, are there more books to come? Yes. The, Maybe when the series ends. I think sometime in 2021, the, the next book is going to come out. She says that she's like got it to the editors and stuff. So I think probably 2021 is when uh, book number nine will come out. Well, then maybe when the whole series ends, you can have a big blowout party. <laughs> maybe you have axe throwing. Does axe throwing fit into Outlander? Um... No, but <laughs> anyway, it, it seems like a very Scottish thing to do. It I mean, does, but yes. Why not axes? Right. <laughs> why not? We'll leave it on that note. Why not? <laughs> All right. Well, it's about time for us to go. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys, for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. 10 right. 30, next Friday. Or ah. three, whenever. Wait, depending on how things go for us that morning. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. guys.